Are, we will be misbehaving a little bit today. Good. Uh, welcome to my home. These are my friends. And this is another episode of Viva Virtuoso, uh, your in home living room variety show set with a beautiful backdrop of Marina Del Rey. So, yes. uh, yeah, give Marina give the view of that, right? So, uh, we have a great show in, uh, in store for you today. Uh, I have just one of the most awesome players I've, I've been able to play with. Uh, uh, not only is he a great player, he happens to be one of the best dressers I've ever <laughs> seen. And I think when you meet him, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, he is employed and uh, uh, excels. <laughs> He's employed. That's not a. That's not the end of the statement. He's employed at the crown jewel uh, of the musical scene in the West Coast, and that is at, in the cello section of the LA Philharmonic. Yay. Would you please? Yes, yes. Hand for the LA Yay. Phil. Wonderful, wonderful ensemble. Yay. Would you please welcome the spectacular, the one and only, best dressed man in America, <laughs> Cal Neen. So, Tal, we have a little program planned today, right? Uh, we're going to do some classical and maybe some not so classical, so we're going to stretch things around a little bit. Thank you to you with arrangements. Ah, okay. Well, why don't you sit down and tell folks about this first number we're going to be up to, and I'll try to try to get my music in order. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so the first piece we'll be playing is an uh, arrangement from a violin piece, actually. It's, um, the composer is Nicola Paganini, whom most of you have heard. I'm sure um, he, he was the early 19th century virtuosic violinist, and they call him the devil of the instrument. Um, but, you know, mo mostly I think because he wrote a lot of pieces that are literally impossible for the violinist to play at the time, and this was one of the arrangements. Uh, the interesting thing about this piece is um, that from the beginning to the end, every, every note takes in one string. On the violin, it's being played on the thickest string, which is the G string, and when it's transcribed to the cello, obviously, the cello has a much lower range, so we do play on the highest string, which is the A string, and the piece is called Moses Variations, on the theme of Rossini. Um, Ready? <laughs> Any tuning or you're pretty confident? Uh, well, as long as the A is in tune, then it's the only the string you can play. The easiest tune uh, song you're tuned for. Thank you. 
That was an energetic number, uh, considering he performed it on one string. Do the other strings ever get jealous? <laughs> uh, they, they do need a little bit more warm up since you know, the A string gets so much attention. All right. My favorite's the G string. So, so Tao, why don't, why don't you tell our, uh, tell our uh, guests here? Kind of a long road to uh, California for you. How did, how did you make it here? Well, uh, the first time I came to LA was actually when I was auditioning for the Colburn School, which is right from, across yeah. the Colburn School. The Colburn School. Yeah, yeah sure. right across the street from Walt Disney Hall. I was um, a student there for two years. I did my artist diploma there. And then at, um, right before I graduated from the diploma program, I got a job at the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra. I was there for three and a half years, and very fortunate I was able to um, get the job in LA Phil, and uh, very grateful to be here. Terrific. We are too. Yes. Well, I'm from originally 
I was born in China. I left China? China when I was 13. Ah. To come to Canada for a year, and then after that, I went and studied at Natick, Massachusetts, at the boarding school there. Oh, that was nice. It was nice. a performing arts school. I know, Bailey, yeah. yeah. That's connected great. with the New England Conservatory mm -hmm. in Boston. Mm -hmm. is, is the uh, cello appreciated as an instrument in China? Their instruments are so different. Their music is so different. I would say over the past 10, 20 years, uh, the whole classical music has really just blossomed. And, yeah, uh, uh -huh. it will prob it's probably the biggest market in the world right now. Really? There's so many uh -huh. kids yeah. that study I agree. music. Uh, mm -hmm. Many supporters, and they, you know, they organize many concerts throughout different cities, particularly in big cities like Beijing or Shanghai. Uh -huh. I'll talk to you about those Mandarin lessons a little bit later. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest market, right? Yeah. 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 That's right. So what we have for you, um, Tao plays all sorts of styles. So we decided we we're going to do a little jazz in addition to uh, some of the standard repertoire. Good. Uh, the, what we're doing is actually considered a jazz standard, uh, and it's been sung by many, many, many singers. Uh, I like the Sinatra version myself. Ooh, uh, yeah. And played by many instruments, sax, piano, guitar. I've heard it by so many, but I've never heard it played with the cello. Yeah. So, so I think uh -huh. we got something kind of okay. interesting yeah, here. Novel. And the yeah, song, it's the first time I'm actually playing a a performing a non-classical genre, so Shh. they won't know the difference. <laughs> oh. Complete improv. <laughs> Complete improv. <laughs> this song you probably all know. It's called Angel Eyes. Oh, yeah. oh wow! Shall I do our little intro thingy?
I think you have a good career ahead of you, son. I think you have a wonderful career ahead of you. Good career. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So how's life at the L.A. Phil these days? Uh, you know, it's a very busy season. We just finished um, almost a month of pretty much all Mozart program. Right. And after that, Gustavo, Judah, our music conductor, right before he left town, we did um, you know a whole bunch uh, South American music, and now okay. we're back to classical uh, pieces. Our principal guest conductor from Finland, mm -hmm. Susanna Malki, oh. is in town, and uh, this week is actually the program sort of fits the coming Halloween mm -hmm. holiday. Uh, we're doing the Symphony Fantastic. Oh, uh, like oh barriers, and wow. the last more I had to reach then, so I think it fits the atmosphere pretty well. So. One fantastic symphony. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the series Mozart in the Jungle? Yes, yes, actually. Is, the, is it anything like that, really, backstage? <laughs> well, you know, to be honest, I haven't really followed the show. Oh, yeah. But uh, we did meet the um, the main actor from the show, and he okay. actually came to the Hollywood Bowl and conducted the uh, the Marriage of Figaro over uh -huh. uh -huh. with us. Oh, wow. yeah. very, uh, a lot of fun. You know? yeah. He's uh, certainly got a lot of charisma. So we have a little bit of a Halloween kind of piece, don't we? Oh. Why don't uh, you introduce it? Well, the next piece we'll be playing is called The Dance of the Green Devil. It's written oh, also by <laughs> Cosmo Casado. Uh, I wish I had more to say about the title of the piece, but you know, I actually did some research online. I couldn't really find any, except all I can say is uh, Cosmo Casado was married to a Japanese lady, and uh, they actually lived in a little town called Takeuchi outside of Tokyo. So uh, the, the sound, as you can hear, it has a lot of uh, Oriental reminiscing okay. theme to it, and maybe perhaps he saw certain folk dance that he had this image of the, the green devil dancing, but you know, it's a lot of fun, and um, again, you hear a lot of pentatonic steel. So, so Is that why you're wearing green comma belts? I think I <laughs> figured it out. We are the green devils. Ah. <laughs> I think that was part of the play. <laughs> and the dance takes place on Tao's fretboard. <laughs> this thing is nuts. Okay. Shall we?
sounded yeah. pretty neat, didn't that it? That sounded neat. That's Japanese. Right. Japanese. You have a question? Any, anyone out there have something uh, you curious about? The life of a cello player? Yeah. Cello? Here, I've got a question. You got a question, please well, ask. The, the question I asked before, the, uh, would be, it might be interesting to get into this program. Uh, oh, <laughs> that is that some uh, violinists, uh, they profess that the bow is more important than the instrument. Uh, and producing the best music. So, so Nat asked about uh, the importance of the bow relative to the instrument. Right. Well, you know, a couple of things that came to my mind. My, um, there's a fam famous violinist called Yaku Haibis. Yes. And when somebody asked him, um, uh -huh. said, you know, Mr. Haibis, you know, your violin just sounds so great. And he goes to, do you hear anything? <laughs> so the point is, my, my teacher put it a very good way once. Um, he said, our left hand is sort of our brain. You know, sometimes we worry too much and not really be able to speak as much. But it's really the right hand that produces the, you know, the artistic things that, you know, and the speaking part of the, you know, the communication part and the music part of it. And a lot of times we're, you know, so wrapped up in our mind and worry mm -hmm. about the left hand and Forget what the big picture is. So I think the bowl is very important. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Well, we have a closing number for you. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the show so far, and uh, it's something especially fun. Uh, one of my favorite series of movies are the old 1930s Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers oh, movies. Yes. Mm -hmm. The old screwball oh. comedies, right? We <laughs> all remember those. Sure. And this particular yeah. song is from a yeah. movie that was scored by a uh, uh, composer of modest fame named yeah. Irving Berlin. Yeah. Oh, oh. You may have heard of I him. Heard, I heard of him. Oh. Uh, the particular movie is Follow the Fleet. Uh, it, it, among its stars besides Esther and Rogers, uh, I believe Randolph Scott was in it. Uh, Lucille Ball had a cameo role. Uh, 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 Betty Grable was in it, uh, and actually an uh, up-and-coming female singer by the name of Harriet Hilliard, uh, oh, who you may know Hilliard. better as Harriet Nelson. Oh, she, uh, she wasn't even a Nelson yet. So, so this goes back in time. Uh, I have searched and searched for a version of this particular song in the genre that we're doing it. Um, and I haven't found one. I've, I've found some uh, a little slower tempo, but not none quite, say, with the bounce that this has. So not only is it unusual that it's with a cello, but it's probably going to be in a style you may not have heard this particular tune played before. So uh, we thank you, and Cal starts this off. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, <coughs>